Hey, I'm just gonna wait a few minutes or a few seconds for you guys to get on. It is 10 o'clock Tuesday and I have my handy dandy laptop. Hey Karen, I have my handy dandy laptop open so I can actually field questions, but I'm just gonna check it and see if it's working. So hold on guys. I don't know if it's going to work. Let's see. Oh yeah, okay. So kind of weird actually having a screen over there and a screen right here. So hey mom, hey Sandra. I got the whole gang, hey Karen. Give a little party. I'm glad you guys are okay me switching it today which was probably a good thing because yesterday my husband was home and all my kids were out. And so what people were doing when COVID-19 started and we were in quarantine the first week was probably cleaning out their closets and doing all that stuff. Well, guess what? We decided to do that this weekend and it's not our closets. Oh my gosh. It is our garage. It's our storage shed. And so if you saw my house right now or my driveway, there's about 30, huge Tupperware tubs that are so full of junk for the last 30 years and we are going through it. And so I'm trying to have this like Marie Kondo, the condo or condo, I don't know, Marie Kondo, I think, attitude. It's so hard. I'm like going through my college notebooks and the kids like fifth grade report cards and I don't know what to keep, but uh, I'm trying to think like if I moved into an RV, what do I need to take with me? <laughs> so I think what I would do is I would um, pay for storage and put all that crap back in there. So anyway, we're doing that because my eldest who's 19 needs to have some privacy. And right now he is in my 15 year old's bedroom because he came home from his semester at sea and I'm not too sure when he's going back to college. So we're making a room for him in the garage. So you guys will hear me chatting about that, I'm sure, over the next few weeks. So that is what I did all weekend. I did manage to go to the beach yesterday. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know, but here in California, or at least where, where I am in Santa Cruz, they are shutting the beaches down at 11 o'clock, which is kind of stinky because it's about 80 degrees and sunny. Uh, so I took Scout for a long walk yesterday. We went down on the beach saw a huge whale breaching, which was like made my whole entire day. And there were hundreds of people on the beach. And I'm thinking, how the heck are they getting off the beach in like 20 minutes? So who knows? I don't know what happened, but I was a good girl and came home. So anyway, I hope you guys had a great weekend, three day weekend, or really like seven or eight weekend weekend, because that's what it feels like. But I'm psyched because today I'm gonna show you some things I've been working on. I had a lot of painting on Friday and Saturday and I was so happy and I want to show you another demo with some acrylic inks and paints that I'm mixing so it'd be really fun. So for those who have not been following me or maybe new to the way I paint, I wanted to show you some, oh I gotta turn that sound off, hold on. I want to show you some of my layers that I've been doing. Let me just turn my sound off there let me just check okay we should be good okay so i decided i had finished the three big paintings that i was working on i'm just waiting to go get them scanned so i decided to start canvas i had all these canvases that were in um our storage and <laughs> i think they're 16 by 20. so i wanted to show you guys a few different layers that i've been doing so this is, whoopsie, this is 16 by 20. And what I like to do is I start all my layers off with words of love. And if you were painting for somebody else, if you were making a painting for somebody else, you might want to put words of love to them or if it was a commission or if it was something about them or their names. And if it was for you, you know, I always want to put in things like I'm going to have trust in the process. I, I have faith in this painting because when I paint, I go through so many different layers that sometimes I can get super frustrated and I just want to have the backbone of my painting tell me, you got it, girl. So 
Um, this right here, ignore this pink. I started covering it up and I wanted to be so I stopped myself because I wanted to show you guys. I do this with paint and I do this with oil pastels. And in our class, um, whoever's taking my colorful joy class will be going through that. And I just wanted to give you guys a little, a little sneak peek on one of those canvases. Okay, so I seriously started one, two, I have four, four that I was working on. Okay, so then this is like a second layer, okay? So this one, I didn't do as many words. I was sort of wanting the words to kind of go down here because I think that this painting is going to be one of my heart paintings. And so I really wanted it to talk about, you know, um, love and light and like just whispering and whispers from the universe and I'm trying I'm, I'm working on some an idea I have and the other thing is I'm going to be working with mostly reds and pinks on this one whoopsie look crooked uh, so that's another background that has only two things on it right now all of this color was done with inks which I'm going to show you and then and then this one okay so this one I, i'm so excited about this is what i'm going to be working on today with you guys okay so then i decided i did the red one and then i thought you know i'm going to try one in all blues and greens and i love blues and greens love 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 oh wait i want to show you guys something this because I think Donna's on the phone, I mean, on the, on the call or on her whatever, or Facebook or call or Zoom or blah, blah, blah. Okay, so here's my whatever. Okay, I can't even get that right. There's my blue background. Look at this cute doll, you guys, that my awesome friend Donna made me. Hello, matching completely. She is my artist doll and she hangs out with me she's got a little tiny elephant on her neck is that the cutest thing ever oh my gosh she is so adorable so donna made me this and she lo knows my colors are blue look it's the exact same colors okay so i'm gonna put her down so on this painting i decided to um really stick really try to stick with some blues and greens, and this is Payne's gray back here. It's like a nice, deep, rich, dark, dark, dark color. And I'm gonna be working on this one. Um, we can talk about that. And then I worked on this one. This one has a lot more layers. Okay, this one, and I'm gonna, I'll put these down too. We can, it's hard for me to hold them and chat with you guys. I'm not coordinated, obviously. Um, so an interesting thing happened with this guy. I sort of really like it like now. <laughs> and so part of me is, oh, I got a massive bumblebee in here. Oh, well, wow. Too bad it's not like a dragonfly. That'd be really cool, but it's a gigantic bee thing. Um, I'm really, really liking it. And there are some things that I'm not loving about it that I need to work on. Like this green, these green little line drips that were on the early stages are not working. Whoa, that guy, it's like, okay, I might have to, okay, hold on people. I'm just gonna open a window. Hello, little fly bee. Come on. Come on. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's never perfect, is it? It's never perfect. <laughs> so, okay. Anyway, I'm really liking it. And, and the thing is, I am a little scared of abstract. I got to be honest. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep working on this one as an abstract piece and just see what happens. And um, I'm curious and a little bit fearful and that's good right because that's the only way you can grow as an artist is to stretch yourself so usually at this time I end up putting an image on here and then I create something with this image and I decided I'm gonna leave this one and keep stretching myself as an abstract so I will be sharing that with you guys and then this other little thing 
I don't know you guys, I'm having some issues with the cradle board. So if you guys work with cradle board, let me know if you got some advice, but okay. Can you, oh, whoopsie. Can you see how shiny it is? I don't know if you can pick that up, but I think I love the canvas because it soaks in the acrylic paints and the inks and I can blend it. I'm having a hard time with this. So I'm not too sure if you guys gesso it first. So I thought I'm gonna put some clear gesso over what I have and build up and see what happens. So let me know if you guys also, anybody out there working with, uh, whoopsie, cradle boards, it's just a different type of texture and I'm not that uh, familiar with it where paper, it's got a little tooth to it and the, and the inks can soak in. The cradle board, it seems to be just skimming off the top. So, okay, I'm going to, I'm hoping that you guys are all still there, right? Okay, I am going to take this piece and put it down. And I'm gonna flip you guys over. You know what I'm talking about. I just think this is so cute. I had no idea they were matching. Okay, so I'm gonna put her here. I'm gonna flip this over. And if you guys have any questions during this process, we'll see if, I can, if it pops up on my other screen. It may not, but. You know, I'll always get back to you. All right, so hold on. Going for a little ride. Let's see how much. Whoa! It looks like from the laptop, I've got some more room here. So I'm just smushing mad. Okay, hopefully you guys are still with me. If you haven't left, don't leave me. All right, so my brushes, where are my brushes? I'm going to be working with these three brushes today. There's this little guy, he, okay, I, I actually am loving this little guy. It's a Filbert, it's a Princeton Art Brush Company. It's a number two, and I really like how um, tiny this little handle is. And then this one, what the heck? I don't know what this one is, but I like that it has a little angle. And this one is a number six and it's just a flat, it's just a flat guy. So let me just center, let me just go like that because I can tell we're a little wonky. Can you guys hear my water fountain? Love it. Okay, sorry. I just don't like things crooked, so bear with me. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, whew, it's so hot in here. <laughs> um, every, everything I do is with the titanium white, so I'm going to be adding some titanium white down here, and hopefully you guys can see that. I'm going to probably put it right next to here, okay? And then um, I have some Nova colors. This one is the phalo, phalo turquoise that I love. Why am I still crooked? All right, I'm gonna put some of that down. And so what I'm trying to do is just really keep a lot of my blues together. My blues and greens, I'm not working with any reds. So when you're acrylic ink, so let me show you, this one's a fallow green, and um, I have a little exacto knife somewhere. Uh, where is that guy? Okay, right here. And um, a lot of times the tops, I, I don't know, they just get a little plug. So I'm just taking a little bit off of there. Sometimes I use my hands. Sometimes it doesn't come out at all. Okay, I got something going on. It's probably splat right over me. This is an Amsterdam turquoise green, the little, uh, one of the stopper ones. So I like to use both the stopper inks, we'll call these bottle stopper inks, and I also like to use the high flow acrylics. Let's see, where's my other colors? I've got the fallow blue green shade. So there's all these different shades. 
And I'm just going to put a bunch of these down. And uh, my palette paper got all wet the other day, so it's kind of wonky. It kind of, um, let me move this over. Let me move this over because I think we've got room so you can see my mixing. Um, and then what else we have? We have a cobalt turquoise. This is just a golden paint. I haven't used this one in a while, so we'll see if there's anything in there. And here's another Nova. This is a blue green. I'm just going to double dip. Just like taco mix, the dip, okay? All right, so what I wanted to show you is um, working with inks, working with inks, and working with um, paints, and I'm not using any water, okay? So what I want to do is I've got a bunch of layers down on here already, and um, I just want to kind of go in with my similar shapes that I like to do. So I'm just going to paint a little bit with you guys here. Some things that I like to do is once I have a, some of these shapes down, I like to go over them with like, I would call it a secondary color. So I'm just grabbing this white and this is my ink. Okay. So the inks and the, so I'm, I haven't touched the regular paint yet. I'm just doing my inks. And so I like to just go in and go right on top of some colors that are already down there. Maybe when I first get started, I'll, you know, like I'll do a little paint session and I'll get started and I might not know exactly what I want to do. So this is a little trick to kind of get you going without kind of thinking about what's my next big move. So I'm just going in and taking this brush. and adding some texture. So now I've got a little bit of the paint I'm mixing and I'm using the titanium high flow to really get my, my um, paint more fluid. The reason I like this brush too is I can do lots of little tiny details. This is usually a layer where I'm not crazy about, you know, I like a lot of what's going on, but I'm not sure of the composition. I don't know where it's going, and I just have to kind of let that stuff go and just kind of work in little areas that I think are fun. That's like a little world, but it's also a little busy, so I'm not too sure if that's probably, I'm going to leave it, but it might not stay. One thing I like to do is outline once I have some shapes down. So I'm just outlining some little areas. And I'm going to go back into some of my inks and show you guys just how much fun you can, you know, once your paints are dry, it's really fun to go in these with these inks and just do some drawings. Just make some marks. I've got a little hidden heart in here. We'll see what happens to that. There are some there's some things in this painting that I'm thinking I want to save, but I don't know if they'll save or not. And so when you're at a stage where you're doing your layers, you can't worry too much about whether you're going to be able to save it. But there, for instance, I don't know if you can see it on screen, but there's a word down here that says joy and there's a word up here that says love, and I'd like to save it, but I may not be able to have that chance because I might just forget and paint over it. So I'm gonna work in this little section here. I had done some blending of some paints behind here, and I wanna bring out some fun little details, hoping that this is in the camera. And so again, my whole idea of this painting is to keep with all of the same kind of color, um, different color um, values. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to um, bring in any of the reds or pinks, even though I might be tempted because that would be fun. I'm really going to see if I can do this without it. I've never done it really like that before, but I thought it'd be fun to try it. So I'm going in with some of the 
medium body paint and I'm just again adding another layer on top of what's already there and you may think oh my gosh it's gonna take forever but you know it's really meditative of course if I wasn't yapping the whole time but it's really meditative to just oh paint over shapes just paint over them you're not thinking about anything you're just kind of lost in thought I love the Nova paint. I love this one, the blue green, and I'm not really mixing it. I'm just going straight with that. It's really uh, so pretty. And of course, if I do mix it, I'll have fantastic colors that way too. So now I'm gonna go in and find shapes and use this green as a little bit of a background. Still using my little tiny brush. I'll probably work with that for a little bit more and then switch brushes. Switching brushes is always a good idea because it will build up some interest in, um, in your painting because there'll be different, different types of strokes. So on the painting that I showed you guys earlier, the one that has lots of colors in it, I just uploaded to my Instagram, but they'll all go to YouTube are as, as a little time lapse of them. So there are three parts. I have one more part to upload, but so if you ever want to see that one in progress and all the different stages, it's there. And my YouTube channel is just Andrea Garvey Art. So I'm bringing this green, and instead of making a shape, I'm using it to go into the background of a shape. Okay, so that's what's happening here. I ordered some new brushes from Dick Blick, so hopefully I, I can be better on my brushes. My sister, who's just starting to paint, is so on the brush thing. She was asking me about a certain brush the other day, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have no idea. I gotta get on it. Got to get on the brushes. Okay, another thing I like to do, you guys have seen me do this, yikes, and I gotta be fast, is grab in my skewer, and just going in and seeing what's underneath. You never know, could be something magical. Could be. All right, and oops, sorry, whoopsie, whoops. Guys, another ink that I like and another brush. Let's go with this flat blush brush. I'm gonna use that green inks and the blue. So I am using just these two mixed together. All right, I'm gonna go in in some areas and see what happens. So I'm pushing my brush around and I'm actually going over. I couldn't show you this last week on my elephant because I had nothing underneath. And then when I was done with the live, I'm like, oh, I should have done that demo on something that had some things behind it. So you can really see what inks can do. Okay, so I've got a layer and I'm just gonna use my hands. You can use a cloth, you could use a sponge brush, you can um, use gloves. I like using my fingers. So it may be hard. I'm going to actually lift this up so you guys can see it. Hopefully you can see that. There's a lot happening in here. It may not pick up on the camera, but there's under layers. And because the inks are translucent, you can pick up some of the shapes and some of the brush marks. And there's probably three or four layers under here that are coming through. It's such a beautiful um, way to bring some you know, interest to your painting and it's so it's not flat. So anyway, hopefully I'm putting it back down in the same sort of area. Okay, so I wanna do that again. I, when I do these paintings like this, I like to do something and then do it somewhere else too, okay? So I'm still using these two together, the Fallow Brothers. And I think I'm gonna put them right in here where it's dark and see what happens if I put it over here, all right? Right to my new shape I just made. 
So on Friday and Saturday, I was in here all day painting on these canvases and um, I was listening to this great book. Okay, have you guys ever heard of The Indigo Girl? It was really a great book. I was listening to it and I'm like, this story's great. I love listening to books and especially when there's a good narrator. And um, I really, really liked it. And then when it was done, they had a little after, little afterward, after section. And um, it's a true story or based on a true story from the 1700s of a woman who was incredibly strong and she was young and she was so forward thinking. And anyway, it's all about South Carolina and indigo. And anyway, if you're looking for a good audible, I highly recommend. So what can happen when I listen to these books is all time literally stops. Okay, before I keep yapping about that, I wanted to show you another thing I do is, so you got your inks on here. <clears throat> I'm gonna try and scrape a little. I'm going to bring this up so you guys can see this. I'm, so when the inks are first put on, just do this right away. Like those little shapes that I made, look how fun that is. Okay. So I'm just taking my skewer and scratching in. And especially if you put a darker ink over a lighter color, not only do you get this new color, okay, you get a little blended color, but then when you do the skewer lines, you're picking up this light green back here. That's really fun. The other thing, what I like to do then is because I'm a tiny bit of a neat freak on my paintings, which is not anywhere else, is that I want to go back and just outline this again, all right, with my brush that I love. So where is my paper towel? Okay. I'm going to take the little bit of white a little bit of the light green ink. So that's this Daler Rowney. Okay, and I'm gonna just go around this shape again. Who knows what the shape will be. It may end up being the inside of a flower. I may leave this one abstract too. I don't know. Don't know. It looks like a world's in the inside though, but I'm not sure about that. Um, okay, so that, so I got these two sections here. I may take that same ink brush. Well, I don't know where that is. I already lost that one. So I'm gonna put those two blues, the two Fallow brothers together, and I'm going to, this is in, in focus screen, I'm going to add it in here just so I have another section of it. I like things in odd numbers in a painting. So I just want to make sure that color is somewhere else. And then once you have these inks down, I should probably put these in water. Hold on. Hold on. Um, once you have, you know, your inks done, and the inks take a second to dry because it's not thick paint. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? But well, you know, oh look, almost a second. Um, then what I like to do is go in once these inks are done and do some little details. So I'm just going to do a few more little details with you guys before you get on with the rest of your day. And if you're across the pond before you go to bed. So what I like to do is use a, is use a nice brush that doesn't have some wonky uh, hairs hanging out like some of mine. So you get yourself your, your good brush and you take care of that good brush. And then I'm just going in with the inks again. So it's a white titanium that I've mixed in with... Um, one of my high flows or one of the bottle stopper inks and I'm just making some marks. And when I'm doing this, I'm not really thinking about, hey, what's happening in my whole painting? 
because it's, again, it's just the beginning stages. It's just, you know, so if you are starting to do this and um, when we take that class together, just do your paintings in stages and um, don't expect to have a finished painting in one day. I mean, you certainly can do it in one day, but it's more fun if you just do them in little sections and then you put it away. And then if you're like me, like the other day, I had a lot of time on my hands because I wanted to paint and listen to that book. I just started a bunch of different canvases and I made sure that I did some small canvases so that I wasn't overwhelmed um, with them being really large because I kind of wanted to get some paint going and, 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 and see what I could create. So I hope you guys like this little demo. So just to recap, um, Okay, I've got recap, yummy brush, find one that you like for the little details, okay? So this is a Filbert Princeton Art and Brush. You don't need that many inks. I love all the inks, but you could try an Amsterdam brand or a Daler Rowney brand, and you can also try a Hypo acrylic. So I've had some questions on the, somebody was asking about these. You can find these anywhere um, at an art store, Dick Blick or Amazon. And just, you know, get a couple. You don't have to get a ton. I recommend if you're just starting getting some warm and cold colors, but for this painting in particular, I'm sticking with these sort of groupings. And I also love to mix in my white titanium ink with some thicker paints too. It's just a way to, you know, work on a color palette and have a bunch of different options with your brushes. I love blending with my fingers on the inks because they're easy to spread. And, you know, you can start, sometimes get a really cool uh, texture here. You get little speckles and it's just a different way to sort of put your paint down. And what else? I think I'll... Just keep working on this one and um, we'll see where that takes me. So, oh, big plane going by. So hold on, I'm gonna bring you back around. Bring you back around, whoopsie. Maybe not, maybe not today. Okay, look, I had to get really low, like a little, like a little person down here. So um, I'm gonna be working on this one this week and I'm going to be working on this one this week and I have a um a newsletter love these colors yes me too Karen I love the colors they're obviously my favorite obviously my favorite colors um I have a newsletter going out tomorrow so if you guys aren't on my newsletter list just go over to my website, andreagarvey.com, and subscribe. You get a free download. But um, I'm going to be putting the transformation of these paintings on there and um, would love to connect that way. Um, what else do I want to tell you? Have an awesome week. I'm hoping some things are starting to open up for you guys. I, like, I think you can go get your haircut soon. I don't know. We can't. I've been cutting my own bangs and uh, all sorts of stuff. So I'm thinking about you guys. I know it's tricky. I'm sure a lot of you who have kids or grandkids, this is the last week. In fact, the boys have to return their um, stuff today at school. I'm not even allowed out of the car. <laughs> so who knows what they're gonna do. <laughs> but anyway, um, you guys take care. Ha let me know if you have any questions too. Write me a message or put it in the comments. I love hearing from you and I love seeing your art. And for those of you who are in my class, it's only a few more weeks. Okay, Mwah. big hugs, love you guys. And I will see you uh, next Monday or back on Mondays. This is just a special occasion, uh, Memorial Day celebration. All right, bye you guys. Thanks for joining. Bye Karen and Karen, and my mom, and Donna, and Sandra, and all my other friends who are on there who I haven't been able to see yet. Okay, I appreciate it. Bye.